What is up guys, Brody here with another new video. Uh, today's video was definitely not planned whatsoever. Uh, to give you a little bit of a, a backstory as to what happened. A couple days ago, I was just getting home and I was actually just about to back my car into the driveway when I looked forward and I saw a bunch of steam just flooding out of my hood and hood scoop. And all of a sudden, my heart sank and I was wondering what the heck could have happened. I looked at my temperature gauge and the needle shot up to high and I was pretty worried at that very moment. Uh, so I got out of my car and I walked around. I saw basically a bunch of coolant spilling out over my front bumper. I popped open the hood and I realized that the OEM radiator on my car, it actually appeared to be leaking out of one of the top seams on the radiator. Uh, for those that don't know, on the STI, the stock rad is actually not fully aluminum. It is part plastic and part aluminum. It's got like a plastic tank. So where the aluminum meets the plastic tank, I guess there was a bit of a pressure leak at that point. And with that, I decided it was time to purchase a new one. So that was the issue and that was the reason why this video today is happening. It definitely was not planned whatsoever. But at the end of the day, things happen. Cars aren't perfect. I decided to go out and look for this particular Koyo radiator that I decided I was gonna purchase. And I was lucky enough where a shop in town had it. After looking up a bunch of options and stuff online, Really the main two popular choices were between the Mishimoto and the Koyo. And just going based off of the reviews, um, the Koyo definitely looked like the better pick. Along with the new Koyo Rad, I also decided to purchase a couple extra things. I also picked up some of these Grim Speed aftermarket hoses. Um, hoses are definitely a good thing to replace while you're doing this. But then lastly, the coolant. Um, I think you can get away with most coolants. I'm, don't quote me on that but I just decided to stick with the Subaru coolant and I just picked up the pre-mix, the 50-50 mix. All right guys, and just so you can see where exactly I was talking about, um, I don't know how well you can see it, but uh, this is the top of the radiator. This black piece is actually the radiator tank. So that is actually right here along the seam. That is actually where I experienced the coolant leak. It was actually just bubbling up right here and quite a bit of coolant actually leaked out. And so first thing I'm gonna do is just pop this piece of the intake off. If you have this piece on your car, it is just two 10 mil bolts. So pop those two bolts off and then we can get this thing out of the way. Once you get your car jacked up uh, and get some jack stands or something underneath, first step you'll have to take this plastic skid plate off if your car actually has it on there. There's like four clips and five bolts. So you'll see a couple clips right here um, and then again, a couple clips on this side and then down the middle, you'll see one, two, three bolts there. And then two more bolts near the back of the skid plate, a bunch of the spilled coolant that actually came out. While we're draining it, we're also going to end up opening up this top cap as well as the bottom cap that's on the actual radiator. We'll pop those caps open and that'll just get some air into it and help flush it out and drain it a little bit quicker. Another important note, like when you're doing most things on your car, we're just gonna disconnect the battery as well. Just underneath the car on the passenger side, um, just above actually this frame here, um, when you drain the coolant, by the way, a lot of the coolant is gonna spill on this frame and then down. So just make sure you have your oil pan in a location where it's gonna obviously catch everything. But looking just above the frame, you will see this connector right here on the passenger side. That is hooking up to the passenger side fan. So before we actually start draining it, I'm just gonna disconnect this fan while we're here. And if you look just below that fan, right on the end there, there's a little cap. Twist that counterclockwise and that'll loosen it up and then the coolant will just start spilling out of there. So, but anyway, before that, we're gonna disconnect this connector here to the passenger side fan. And if we look over here a little bit more, right there, it's right above the lower radiator hose. That connector, we'll also unplug that one going to the driver's side fan. So we'll get those disconnected right now just to kind of get that part done with. After we uh, disconnect those, I am just going to um, remove that plug and start draining the coolant out. I took the uh, drain plug out and now it's starting to drain. Um, I also went and got the two connectors taken out. Um, by the way, it's easier to take that stuff up from the top. The passenger side connector I took out from the top. The driver's side connector I actually had to take out from the bottom. With this, uh, this reservoir tank, it was pretty hard to get around that, so I had to take the connector off from the bottom. 
But, uh, and then the drain plug, I found it easier just to take it off from the top. Just feed your hand down and you should be good. But uh, now that it's draining, what you want to do is go ahead and open up this cap here. And that will allow it to drain a little quicker. As you can hear, it's starting to come out a whole lot faster now. And then also the radiator cap. So take those both off. Make sure you got this aimed properly. Like I said, it's gonna hit that frame. And yeah, now we're just gonna let all that drain out. And once that has finished draining, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the lower radiator hose and a little more coolant should come out of that. We'll come back up to the top. We're gonna disconnect your upper radiator hose. And by the way, the upper and lower radiator hose, I'm just gonna take those right off because like I said before, I'm gonna be replacing them. And lastly, we just have these two hoses coming from up here. They'll come down. One goes right here and the other one will connect to this metal pipe here coming off the radiator. So right there, we'll take those two off, we'll disconnect the bolts, holding the radiator in place. Also, just so you can get an idea for what that drain plug looked like, um, this is it right here. I don't know if it's gonna focus, there you go. So that's what it looks like. As you can see, it's just barely dripping now. So pretty much all the coolant has drained out of that part of it. Um, now what we're gonna do is move over to the driver's side again. And if you can see, this is our lower radiator hose. So these two clamps that you can see are on it, we're gonna end up uh, disconnecting those. And be careful because more coolant is gonna spill out of this tube. It helps also just having an extra oil pan. Um, that way I can leave the other one in its original position and just let it catch the last few drops. That way it doesn't leak on the floor. Uh, and then I'm gonna pop this one underneath the lower radiator hose. So when I loosen those clamps and pop the, the hose off, um, it'll catch whatever spills out of that line. Next step we're gonna do is pop this top radiator hose off. Also, I'm gonna try and wiggle out this um, power steering tank here. Actually, before I take the power steering tank and pull it up, I'm gonna disconnect the, the radiator hoses first. There we are. And we're gonna take these two smaller hoses we're gonna do the same thing, disconnect those. So, disconnect that guy. And just wiggle it off. Should come off pretty easily. Like so. And again, this one should slide off pretty easily as well. And as for this power steering tank here, be gentle, because you don't wanna break these hoses. I have to kind of slide this guy out of the way just in order to get the radiator out just because it kind of crosses over the fans and in order to get the whole rad out you want to get as much clearance as possible. All right so there you can see I've got this kind of up and out of the way gives us some more room. So these two bolts here basically are what hold on to these metal brackets and the top of the radiator um, it has basically two pieces that come up through these holes. So when we take these brackets out, we're going to pop these out of the way and we should be able to lift the radiator out. All right. So take those bolts out of the way and then these brackets should just pop off just like so. Oh. Clearly the radiator's not quite empty. I'm just kind of leaning it to the side and helping uh, some more drain out. We'll probably just take this whole thing off now. There you go. Try and bend this a little bit out of the way. There we go. And just like so, all disgusting rad is out. All right guys, so managed to get the old radiator out. Honestly, just have a little bit of patience with it. 
Um, you'll just need to finesse it a little bit, but it will come out pretty easily actually. Okay guys, just to give you an idea of what we're looking at while the radiator's out, if you look down here, you can see that this is the one connector on the passenger side, and then this is the connector on the driver side, if you can see that, I don't know. But then at the very bottom, if you see those kind of two rubber gaskets with little holes in the middle right here, there's one on this side, and then one on this side. Those um, are what your radiator actually sits down in. So when you go to put the new one in, you have to make sure that it's sitting in those holes, because that is exactly what keeps it locked in place. So in those, just to show you where on the radiator, this is the bottom of the radiator. So this one, and on the other side, is this one here. So those two guys you have to make sure are locked into those little rubber gaskets at the bottom. As well, when we put the brackets back on top, that is what these things here stick into. So there's ones on the top and on the bottom. So now what we're gonna do guys is start transferring the old components off the old rad onto the new radiator. It's gonna be one tab on the far outside. If you just pinch it in, It'll allow, it'll allow you to lift this whole thing up and then it's just sliding it up and out of the way like that and then it'll just come out of the bottom this little notch in the bottom will just pop out of this little hole here as for the tube that goes to this overflow tank just leave that this tube basically hooks up to this metal pipe running along the top of the radiator um, it's just held on by three 10 mil bolts this whole line as you can see comes off so we'll transfer this metal line over to the new radiator uh, after we put the fans on. Some of the bolts from the pipe are actually shared with the fans, so those are in the middle. Um, the fans still have, uh, looks like, just two bolts holding the rest of the fans on. So we'll pop those two bolts off now, just in the top corners. There's one there, and one there. And then I'm assuming the bottom is just actually clipped in. So yeah, take those bolts out and then just pull up and the whole fan assembly will come out. So now what we're gonna do is just transfer this over onto the new rad. The new radiator I've noticed comes with brand new bolts. Slide it down into its intended hole at the bottom. And then the top will simply mount up with the new bolts. Same with this fan here. Pop this in. Don't forget our metal line running along the top. Remember that shares some of the bolts here. Before you hook this metal pipe up to the new radiator, take your overflow tank and just go drain anything that's left in it. Just drained it. Now all we're gonna do is pop this back into the same place it was hooked up before. Put this far top left corner bolt in first. Don't have to be too tight, remember? Just snug. Alright, this thing is back in place, like so. Let's put the rest of our bolts in. Make sure this drain plug is tight before you go ahead and put this back into the car. What is up guys? Okay, so I went ahead and kind of just got everything reconnected, the hoses and the bolts, and I'll walk you through exactly what I did here right now. As I mentioned before in the video, I made sure that those two little pegs were in their intended little rubber um, holes. So I had those seated, and then what I did is I reconnected the fan plugs just from underneath the car, it was super simple. Then I got the lower radiator hose in place, and I got the bracket cinched up and tightened. So then I moved back up to the top. What I did first was I got my power steering lines and container here, in and clipped back in. So there's actually a clip, I don't know if you can see it, right here where my finger's touching, that this hose, the power steering hose, clips into. So this power steering hose right here should actually go over top of this black pipe. Uh, and again, the black pipe, I then connected to the inside thinner line, as you can see, and then the thicker outside line, that connects to this outside nipple on the radiator at the very corner. And I got the clamps back on both. And so after that was done, I went ahead and got the upper radiator hose. And as you can see, I got my new Grim Speed one on. I went ahead and 
Got these brackets, put the pegs through the holes, as you can see, and then I bolted these brackets back in. So now the rad is basically locked into place again. It also, this tube here, um, it just connects back onto the nipple here by the radiator cap. Uh, this little intake snorkel piece, I'm gonna go ahead and put that piece back in. And then I'm also gonna go ahead and just put this plastic skid tray back underneath the car. Um, so I'm basically just gonna get everything back into place. What is up guys? All right, so we are back. It's the following day. I just got home from work a little bit ago. As you can see, obviously I got this back on and then underneath the car, I got that back on. But yeah, so once you know everything's tight, everything's secure, uh, everything's back on the car, what we're gonna do is like I said, start filling this up. So I think to try and be a little quicker, I'm first gonna fill up the radiator. And then once that's done, I'll seal the line. And then I'll move my funnel up to the highest point and then proceed with trying to add more coolant into the lines. And then once I feel like that is stopped, that's when I'll go ahead and start the car and let it idle. I went and picked up my new radiator cap. So that looks pretty cool. And this is the funnel that I will be using for this. So this is like, more or less a coolant funnel, really. Um, as you can see, it comes with a bunch of attachments and those are to actually hook up to where the radiator cap would connect. And that basically just ensures that there's no leaks. As you can see, it has a little bit of a plug. So you can add a bunch of coolant in here and then obviously once the radiator is full and no more coolant can go back in, you can simply just push this down it plugged up the funnel, and then we can move our funnel and coolant to wherever we need it to go. So as you can see, I went ahead and just put this plastic adapter on top of the radiator cap area, and now I should be able to plug this straight in. We have a nice tight seal, so there's basically no coolant that can actually spill out. Yeah, I'm just gonna start slowly pouring this jug. I think, I don't know the exact number, but I think uh, the amount of coolant this is supposed to hold is around seven point uh, it's just under eight liters. So. And then once I have a bunch of this stuff in, I'll slowly start to add some of the additive in. So I've added most of the first jug into here. So I'm gonna take this moment to add some of this additive as well. Uh, make sure you shake it up. Okay, so just an update. I've added about, I'd say half of the other jug in there so far now. Um, and I can actually see the coolant um, just inside that hole. So I can tell that the radiator is probably as full as it's gonna get as well. If I look over here, you might not be able to see it on camera, but I can just see the coolant starting to fill up in here as well. I end up taking this funnel out of here, sealing this up with the new radiator cap. And then once I've done that, I'm not going to open this radiator again. Basically what we're gonna do from now on is I'm gonna continue adding more coolant as I can. Um, I don't know how much it's gonna let me, but while I'm adding coolant, I'm basically gonna try and burp the lines a bit, maybe squeeze this upper rad hose, try and get to a point where the air bubbles start coming out, um, and then maybe it'll allow a little more coolant to go back in. And then once I feel like I'm on a standstill there, I'll end up going and starting the car and letting it idle, and turning up the heat, and hopefully that'll clear some more of the lines, and draw some more coolant in, and push some more air out. So. That is kind of the, the process and the strategy that I'm going to be taking. Okay, so once again, I'm just gonna start adding some coolant now to the top part here. Radiator caps back on. Um, and then as you can see, you can see that little bit of coolant in here still now. What I basically did, and I think I've gotten to a point now, is I tried squeezing the upper rad hose and the lower rad hose, and I was working for a while, but I don't know if you can tell, but when I squeeze the hose, you can see how the coolant kind of comes back up a bit. So for the first while, what was happening was I was getting a bunch of air bubbles. So I could tell I was squeezing out some of the air, but it's gotten to a point where no more air is coming out this way. So I think I've basically reached a point there. I'm just gonna to top this up a little bit, and then we're gonna go ahead and start the car. Uh, and when you do that, just keep an eye on the operating temperature. Make sure it doesn't go too far above that first dash. Um, and also we'll get the heat turned on and everything, but I'll show you all that. I'm gonna turn up the thermostat so it's as hot as it can go. And then with the fan, you just wanna turn that down so it's on low. Not off, just low. So full hot and then fan on low. And then we'll just put this setting to where it's coming out of the top vent so that way we can feel it getting hotter. 
because if the air out of the vents is getting hotter and you start noticing that, that's basically one way of telling you that the air is starting to come out of the lines, which is what we want. Alright guys, and as far as the operating temperatures go, um, I basically got the car up to that point where it just sits on that first dash, if not right above it. And that's for the most part where it always was even before I replaced the radiator. This thing running for a solid 20 minutes and that included me revving it to around 2, 2,500, 3,000 um, and holding it there for a second or two. Um, so I did that and it stopped bubbling for like the last five minutes I had the car on. So that's when I figured it was done letting the air out. As far as the heat goes in the car, um, the heat coming out of the vents, it started getting really hot. So that's also a good sign. What I did is I went ahead and I put the radiator cap on that top portion of the coolant system. And so right now all I'm gonna do is just let the car cool down. And then what I'm gonna check on is the overflow um, container. And hopefully when the car cools down, some of the coolant would get sucked up back into the overflow canister. So we'll see if that's the case. I might end up topping that up with just a little bit of the extra coolant that I have, um, but we'll see what level it's at. It should be somewhere between that min and max on that container. I actually just thought I would wrap things up here. Um, like I said before, I'm just waiting for the car to fully cool down. Um, that's really all you guys need to see. And hopefully that helps if any one of you also want to do something like this to your car. Overall, the job really isn't that complicated, just a bit of time and patience. If you did enjoy the video, definitely smash that like button, we'd greatly appreciate it. And as well, if you haven't already, definitely subscribe. Um, I got a bunch of other videos on my channel you can check out as well. I have a bunch more planned here in the near future. But other than that, guys, I hope you have a great rest of your day and we'll catch you in the next video. Take it easy.